Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo, woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I've got our girl, Hilarious Fortune Feimster, coming in in a sec. But first, let me go over what happened last night at the People's Choice Awards because there was some juice that happened and some hilarity. Okay, the, our girls, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they were presenting all of them together, I believe. I did not watch it um, because I, I don't know. Why would I watch it? I was watching my unorthodox life, which I'll get into in a minute. But anyway, um, the looks were a little strange. I mean... Lisa Renna, her hair, she did not wear a wig, and I think it's been too long, and she actually needs... I don't want to start me start again. Okay. Uh -huh. From the very top. Yeah, yeah, let me just start again. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Okay, you guys, I have the hilarious Fortune Feimster here. We got into lots of fun, hot topics, but I just wanted to catch up a little bit on what happened at the People's Choice Awards, because there was some fun. Our girls, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, were there, and they were sitting at a table, and I saw Kyle's Instagram account, and she was kind of like, mm, because Kathy was sitting right next to Lee Serena. As we know, they have not started filming again, though I don't think it's on an indefinite hiatus. I heard they're starting again in January. Of course, I believe they're all going to come back with probably one or two new people to shake it up. Um, the outfits were a little interesting. Lisa Renna looked a like she had her hair really short, wore sunglasses, and she looked a little like James Charles. I don't know if you know who he is, but that's who she kind of looked a little bit like. I love her. She's beautiful, but this was not my favorite look. Um, but then something really great happened, and the internet, the Bravo spear, went abuzz. Our girl, uh, Mariska, hard to say, um, won the award, and I guess the... Uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills were up there because they were the ones presenting. And then when she was accepting, Kathy Hilton was in the shot right behind her. So Mariska was not aware of what was going on behind her. But Kathy Hilton took that time to open her purse and reapply her lip gloss, which I doubt was Rinna Beauty. Anyway, um, I, I think it's funny. I think everything she does is super planned out and calculated. I think she is a funny person. And there's no way this was her being a kook. In my opinion, there was no way this was her being a kooky girl going, oh, I didn't realize the camera was on me and I wanted to add some more gloss. That's my opinion. But either way, it was pretty entertaining. And it's not like Mariska's going to care. It's a people's choice award. It's not like she did it why she accepted an Emmy. Okay, so who cares? So people are all talking about it. I want to say, I think Kathy Hilton looked absolutely great. And for someone with her body and her age, this was a perfect outfit. I just wanted to tell you ladies why I think it's perfect. It was right above the knee. It was purple. It was a great color. She, then she had nice platform sparkly purple shoes. And then it had like this matching cape situation going. So it's like your arms are covered, your ass is covered, but then you hold your purse so that you can easily get your lipstick out and reapply it while someone else is talking. On camera, and you can pull focus from it, but also kind of slimming and cute. So I'm just giving her that. But meanwhile, Sam, Brittany's husband, put on his Instagram stories, what's a good podcast to go on? Sam, you're right up the street in Westlake. If you'd like to come on Juicy Scoop, I'd love to have you. Of course, I'd love to have Brittany too, but I would love to have you and really trying to get in your brain, see your body in person see what you're up to. I'd like to know your story, your life story. When you came over here as a child, what's going on with you and Brittany's future? So let's see. But, you know, it, we got to be able to talk about more than just protein shakes and, and a workout. So if that's all it's going to be, you can go on archetypes. Okay. Um, Shania Twain wore this outfit and she sang and it, she sounded great. And I saw... Um, Post Malone, like rocking out to it, which looked really fun. He's such a happy guy. And 
So the outfit that she was matching was this one that she wore, that classic look, which the she, she wore a like um, leopard skin bra and cape and little pants, and she had like a perfectly flat stomach grate. And like 25 years later, she did it again, but instead she did like this this meshing of her stomach. Now her stomach is super flat and good, but I'm just saying as someone that's not super young anymore, no matter how thin you get, your skin changes. And crop tops and stuff just doesn't work after a certain age, even if you have a flat ass stomach. And I think that's maybe why, and I don't think it's necessary, but it reminded me of rest in peace, Kirstie Alley. She was the original brave. Kirstie Alley, she just passed away of cancer, very sad, but she was always so funny and did so many great shows. Cheers, Veronica Closet, Look Who's Talking. But she, her weight after Cheers would fluctuate a lot. And she was a spokesperson for a lot of different diets. And one minute she would be on a diet thing and be thin. And the next she'd be like on the cover of people like, I ate cake for a year and I'm happy. And she looked beautiful no matter what because she was really pretty. But when Oprah was on one of her up and down kicks of being thin, she said, Kirstie Alley says, I'm going to come back on your show, Oprah, and I'm going to wear a bikini. And she came out in a bikini, but what she did was she wore like sheer tan nylons and she pulled them all the way up to under her bra. And so there was the seam there. It was like before Spanx was invented. Anyway, again, the original brave person that was like, I said I was going to do it. I'm going to do it. This is also sad. Wendy Williams' son, Kevin, he's 22. He's been evicted from his $2 million Miami apartment. So... She, Wendy Williams pays the rent on this apartment and did for a year, which was $100,000, for her son to go to school and live in a $2 million Miami high-rise fancy apartment. I guess he hasn't paid for months, so they evicted him. He owes $70,000 in rent. He said, I was a full-time student, but I stopped because I was helping to take care of my mother. But because Wells Fargo has frozen her accounts, which is so weird, and I still don't understand why that's happening, she was not able to pay his rent, and now he's been evicted. I mean, I think that's a pretty extravagant rent, but at one time she was making $10 million a year. If that's where she wanted her son to be, and that was going to make him happy, and she could afford that rent, she has every right to do that. I just don't understand the whole situation with the Wells Fargo, and I think that's terrible. But I'm glad that he is there with his mom. Okay, Julia Hart. As you know, she's been on the show. I've socialized with her. Um, I wrote her to say I was excited to watch season two of My Unorthodox Life on Netflix. And hopefully she can come on the show soon, though I'd love to have her in person. This just came out yesterday, according to Page Six. Julia Hart's former divorce attorney is suing her for almost $500,000. Her former divorce attorney, she now has a new attorney. This one said she never was paid for all her hours of work and everything that she did for Glor for Julia, which is basically what we see in season two. I just finished it. It's like eight or nine episodes. And it's pretty juicy because it starts out, if you watch the se first season, Julia Hart was this woman who lived a very orthodox life, married at 19, had four kids, and just eight years ago escaped, as she likes to say it, but many people in the orthodox religion does not do not like that she uses these words, but she says, I escaped, I left my husband, I left the religion, and I became a shoe designer, and I sold my shoe company to La Perla or something, and in that time of doing all this, she met this guy, Silvio. They fell in love, got married, and he made her the CEO of his elite global, can you look up what the company is? Elite global management company, which not only um, represented a bunch of models, but different brands and things like that. And she was the CEO and she's planning, she's telling me as we go out to dinner, I know what I'm going to wear when the public when the company goes public and I own she said she owed 51% of the company and so then after 2 years of marriage they break up and you see in the show that the main reason that they are getting divorced is that he thought marrying her world group. elite world group he thought marrying her that even though she had four kids their life would really be about the two of them 
And she's a great mom. And even though three of her kids are over 18, they were around all the time. And they were, her younger one lives half time between she and her husband, and he's in high school. And he, according to her, did not like the kids around all the time. He was like, I don't want them in the apartment when I'm there. Uh, can they get, Can we get them their own place, like a different apartment where they would stay and come over when I'm not around? She said we'd have to have to, I'd have to have a meal with him and a meal with my kids, and came to a place where she thought it was a mutual agreement, separation, divorce, and she's like, nothing's going to change. I'm going to stay here. He's moved out. I'm going to remain the CEO of this big conglomerate. You know, and I'm going to continue to shop and live the way I've lived. So everyone still gets to keep their job. Not a problem. And we're watching this happen on the show. They're catching it as it happens. And then as the cameras are running, she gets a notice, an email saying, Silvio, the ex-husband, has removed her from being CEO. And she's like, what? She gets an attorney. She files for divorce papers. And then he's like, uh, I'm coming to get all my stuff. She's like, no, trying to keep him away. One night they're sleeping and someone takes like some art and she's like, what is going on? So she's trying to like figure out what's happening. Meanwhile, her gay best friend who's worked for her, her main right hand person, he eventually is out of a job. All of her kids are out of a job. Um, and the show is not what they thought it was going to be which it's, it's still really juicy and interesting to watch this happen in real time. But, you know, they probably thought this second season, um, you know, I was talking to her and she was like, you're going to walk in this fashion show that we're going to do. I'm going to have you on the show. And no, me coming on the show made no sense. But it, we thought that's what the second season would be. It would be like a lot of come to fashion week. We'd see more of that. But we didn't because she doesn't doesn't have a place to go besides this penthouse. And she doesn't want to leave the penthouse because if she leaves the penthouse, he could just come in and like move her shit out and you know how a divorce could be. So it's pretty juicy and I'm gonna, I'll get more into it on Patreon this weekend. You guys, I have a great uh, ju extra juicy scoop for you and that's on Friday and she, my sister, criminal defense attorney, Shannon and I would go and do a full hour episode on Casey Anthony, what happened in the case, what happened in the Peacock documentary. That comes out Friday. We also did a Juicy Crimes, which if you're part of Patreon, that's a triple scoop of the second tier. And we do that on the um, Idaho murders and everything that's going on with that and what Shannon thinks of as a criminal defense attorney. And then I've got my Get Be Behind Gates juicy episode that will come out also out this weekend, which I'll talk about everything else. So great content coming for you that guys this Friday in the weekend. And I'm going to talk about more about Julia Hart's show. But if you want to watch it, watch it because I'd love to discuss it more with you. Get Julia on here. Um, anyway, she said that she's not paying for this attorney because she wasn't happy with the work that the attorney did. But there is a lot of hours <laughs> that she did not pay anything for. So I don't know how that works. Um, and then also the other case is she um, she said, I, I own half the company. I signed papers, everything that I own half the company. He promised me that when he married me, Silvio. Silvio's like, no, you don't own half the company. They found out that the papers that he had her sign, he never filed. So the court says they're not valid. But she believed it. She told me, she told people we know. She acted as that for a couple years, thinking that this is her career forever, whether they get divorced or not. She's still in the, in the $65 million penthouse right now. Um, and still has a chef and a butler. So I'd love to know how she's paying for all of that and what the plan is. Anyway, if you want to watch that show, that's on Netflix, too. Um, here it is, My Unorthodox Life with Her Kids. Oh, uh, Christine is having the time of her life from Silver Sister Wives. She's having a blast. Um, we also see on this episode that Janelle definitely is, I think, going to leave Cody. Cody says, you don't respect me. You aren't loyal. And I thought... I kind of got the feeling that they weren't boning ever, she and Janelle, but 
Christine's like, Janelle always said their relationship was fine. That And then even Janelle goes, Cody, you're my best friend. You're my lover, everything. And he said, I just don't like going to that trailer and with the dogs on the bed. So I'm like, wow, he's still going over and sleeping with Janelle? Because it definitely feels like they haven't been. Anyway, that's going to be really juicy next week. Meanwhile, I had another horrible nightmare that I was in the marriage with Cody, Robin, and like Robin and I were like getting along really weird. So I, again, constantly am having nightmares that I am in this marriage with all of them. And I was in Cody and Robin's house and like being friendly with Robin. It's just, it's, please just don't watch the show late at night if you don't have nightmares about a weird hairline and a bad blonde perm with a misogynistic polygamist asshole that regrets being a polygamist. If you don't, I suggest you don't watch the show. But if you do, it's fucking juicy as shit. All right, you guys, I'm so excited to have my girl here, Fortune Feimster. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am with <laughs> Fortune Feimster, and we have these Juicy Scoop straws. I know you're like, Heather, we've heard about the Juicy Scoop straws. No, <laughs> this straw actually spells out juicy. And My water's not coming through. Scoop. That's because it's a long journey for the water Ooh. to go through all the words. Juicy Scoop. Uh, Peter just ordered these. Um, not the most practical thing. It takes a while for <laughs> the water to get through the word scoop. Because it's the full, like, J, handwriting, U, It's I. cursive. Yeah, okay, so now I'm going to take it out of I love drink. that Peter is now your momager. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I'm going to make money off this show, Pony. We're going to, we're going to, there's, is this going to be an entrepreneurial situation? I don't know, but it's really funny that you say that because Peter will bring up Many, many years ago, yeah, I think Chelsea had a book party, and she invited Chris Jenner as well as us because I worked on the show. Right. I think it was like maybe her second book. Uh -huh. The show had just started. And so Peter picked up Chris Jenner. Okay. And they drove from our side of the valley <laughs> to like Beverly Hills. Wow. And he talks about how she talked about how she learned so much from Robert Kardashian yeah. and marketing and all this other stuff. And they went through the hills and she's like, oh, I used to live in this house over here in Beverly Hills with Robert. Yeah. And so, yeah, maybe that's where he got the idea. <laughs> he got it from He got Chris. the, the she original would, momager. She would never ride with anyone but a security detail now because <laughs> she's turned this into a lot of success. <laughs> I don't even think Peter, and the sad part is, Peter didn't even go all the way to Calabasas to pick her up because she wasn't in Hidden Hills then, I don't oh, think. He, maybe he, she had just moved to Hidden Hills. He didn't he, even get behind no, the he, gates. He said, meet me at the Ralphs at Winnetka and Ventura. No. Do you imagine telling Chris Jenner, <laughs> park your car and I'll pick you. Like, I don't want to be at all convenienced. I'm going to pick you up right near the freeway at Winnetka and what? She's like, what is this store you speak of? He's like, Ralph's. <laughs> so that's when she was like full blown, like housewife, went to Ralph's Costco, made oh, her own food. Yeah, wow. this is big, right? Like, I don't even know that Kardashians have started or they're just about to start. Wow. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know this world in which you speak of. It's just Juicy Scoop history for you. <laughs> but you're going to make history. Oh my gosh. Because you're the first adorable, dimpled woman with a perfect nose Aww. to be. Nominated for a Critics' Choice Award I mean, for your best comedy special. Look how cute you are. That's very exciting. Very, very exciting. Congrats. Look, Chris Frangiola gave it a like. Oh, God. And you wrote, uh, I you wrote called a comment. me gorgeous and funny. Yeah. <gasps> Because was... I'm like, well, I don't think enough people n think that uh, that funny women can also be beautiful. I appreciate And beautiful it. women can be funny. And it's hard when you're you and me. I only cared to, about the gorgeous comment. To break Thank through you. that barrier. Because <laughs> I'm sure when you walk out there, they're like, why is this gorgeous, stunning person? Like, is she going to make me chuckle? And you do. Oh, thank so God. I, I thank God I was able to parlay my good looks into comedy. <laughs> <laughs> fellow debutantes which I love okay so your special so funny Aww, and thank I, you. I really like it and I really like that one of the funny themes that come up at the top is that like I know I look like a more butch lesbian right but you didn't say I mean but you really are a debutante at heart I'm a dainty lady we were Debs and you're like not handy no and you can't fix shit nope and I kind of think 
what is the point of having a lesbian around? So I get. Jackson said that a couple of times. She's like. Your wife. Yeah. She's yeah. like, I almost need a man right now because you're not pulling your weight. <laughs> when, when you went on tour and and Chris got to, got, Chris opened for you as well. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot. And um, at one point I go. You know she's inviting you because she, like, wants a dad. And I'm like, she no, a needs a dad to drive. Like, the dad husband to drive. And he's like, yeah. I think you're totally right. He, I would call him my husband on the road because he started, like, carrying our bag. Yeah, he's wonderful. And unpacking the car. <coughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is pretty great. Well, when he'd come with us, we brought Annie. Mm -hmm. And so it was, he was full dad mode with Annie. And yeah. I, like, he sits in the front with the Uber driver, starts a mundane conversation. Yep, you don't have to, you don't have to talk to anybody because no. he's doing it. But in, like, a, like in a very, like, oh, this is kind of car is this like just so dad boring like so i'm like oh my god just he just took the roll on for yeah. the weekend he was driving he was driving us too and then a meth head <laughs> ran into us luckily nothing, wait you got in an accident well nothing was hurt like we just got we were, we pulled into i can't remember what city it was and then we were like stuck in some traffic and all of a sudden it was like and we both kind of like flung forward and back and some like guy missing half his teeth but like clearly from a substance situation uh who i couldn't believe he stopped was, he was toothless but he was not homeless because he had a car he had Tooth a car do you know that charity do you watch real house oh Beverly i did Hills? see that yes toothless not homeless that's Go right on. Um, that is an interesting name of a of a, a charity. Um, Chris got out, and I'm like, Chris, don't get out! Like, and the guy stopped, but we checked the car, and everything was fine. And then I was like, I think I got to drive because he wasn't on the, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't tell anything about that. Okay. Um, so wait, so then did you just then you just return the car and they have or no? Actually, and... we did put him on the the oh, in, okay. the car. Uh <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure we did because he went up to the counter with me. Yeah, yeah we, sure, did sure we did at it. We did at him. Of course, it's no big deal. But I, I was. In, He's over 25. That's right. But yeah, that was uh, a weird way. Oh, that was the same weekend that uh, somebody like uh, was also on a different substance at my show. Came to at the beginning of his set and came down and try to pull the speaker off the stage while he was performing. Oh, that's right. I remember hearing that story. Yeah. And that was a crazy woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. And she started swinging at the lesbians that tried to stop her. It was wild. Wow. It's been a find, wild time. Do you find that you have any crazy Fortune Femster fans that are just out of control? Not like that. that is not the norm for my fans. <laughs> Everyone that comes to my show. I would think are pretty respectable They're pretty people. respectable people. They love snacks. <laughs> just want to have a good time, you know? Oh, my God. So funny. Okay, let's talk. Now, you know about, do you know about the Good Morning America scandal? I saw this. Yeah. Yes. But here, so are we... Ask any questions. I know every single thing. Okay. Here's the thing. The, the story that came out is wild because clearly someone was following them yes. for, like, weeks. I right? Think, I think... We're talking about Amy Robach and TJ Holmes' affair on Good Morning America. I believe... And I don't know if it's been proven fact, but it makes the most sense that I think it was his wife, I think, hired a detective to follow them. And that's where the photos to were. And she was like, put it fucking out there. Because so so the assumption is that they started the affair, split up with their people and now are more open about it. They didn't. Well, they have to be open they about didn't, it because the photos came right, out. Right. But they didn't like. Split up with their people and then start dating. We're well, assuming it to, might have started. They tried before. to say that. They tried to say, no, we both broke up with our marriages, which were both 13 years long. Both were second marriages for oh, both of them. And um, and then we, you know, then we decided to date, which I made like a joke about, like, oh, all of a sudden you're just walking out of the bathroom and you're like, oh, hey, TJ, how are you? Oh, not great. Broke up with my wife for 13 years this weekend. Oh, so did I. <laughs> Want to go to a fuck pad this weekend? And look at each other differently. Want to just right? So, so the basic... timeline's not in their favor. But do you know what also has happened? No. So it also came out that TJ, the man, okay, was also having a three-year <gasps> affair while he was married with another person, with a female married producer of the Good Morning America, no. show, who was also best, but really good friends with Amy. Would go and have dinners and stuff. No, girls dinner. I didn't yeah. know that. 
And that is a, some juicy then, scoop. Then just got some more juicy scoop mm. from a juicy scooper that will remain but anonymous. Hold on, before you what? tell that, the thing that you just revealed that has been confirmed. No, that's yeah, that's happened over the weekend. Oh, okay. Yes, I, that I didn't came hear that. out. And then that is why that is scandalous. That is why the president of the news division of ABC said we're going to take them off. I don't think they're off the show like, yeah, indefinitely. I saw that like a temporary like, suspension. But we just, it's a distraction, and we just need to. Yeah. However, the ratings were like the highest of they'd course. ever been on Friday. Of course, and they were giddy. They were like giddy and happy, and I did not watch it. But oh, the report oh, was they, they were on had a great show. Like, and some people were like, you know what? Let them be together. Who cares? Okay. You know. But then when it found out that basically he's a serial cheater, and I oh, said he no. sounds like a serial cheater, and then I got a he's very a, handsome. Got, I got a email okay. from someone who is a legit person, but said oh, keep my legit. name out of it. I mean, it was I looked him up. They are no, a legit no, person. It wasn't like a you know blind item. Like they wrote me, okay, and they said. You're absolutely right about him. He is a serial cheater because I worked at a station in San Francisco. Alleg- with him. Allegedly. allegedly. All I, of this is allegedly. Allegedly worked at a station in San Francisco and he had an affair for several years with someone there while he was married to his first wife, Amy. So, so allegedly, he really likes the people he works with. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That is. I, I would be so curious to know. How Amy reacted when she found out about the producer. Unless she knew. Maybe she knew. Yeah, she may not have known and she may have known. She may that made <laughs> There are two scenarios. That made it sometimes <laughs> that kind of turns people on. Like if she would have like if the if the married producer <laughs> sorry, if the married producer would have said, like, talked about it all the time. Of yeah. Like how great it was and greatest fucking sex of my life or whatever. Yeah. That could have got her being like, I'm unhappy with Andrew Shue. And and I need to see what this is about. Yeah. And I want some of this. Yeah. That producer could have enticed. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. Wow. This is but a I real mean, scandal. I think, I think it is a scandal because this isn't like, oh my God, the two stars of White Lotus, which we'll talk about later, like yeah. a sexual R rated HBO Max show. Right. Even though they were married, they got together. That that's different. Like this, this is, is like, a, like coffee. Let's yeah. have coffee and be clean family fun. Right. And we all of our jokes are so light and you know yeah. and so walking. Oh, and we're gonna do something crafty. Have you guys ever mixed beer with cheese? Oh God, not before <laughs> twelve. <laughs> like it's geeky stuff. Yeah. The, so well, it's original not for cheaters, is what I'm saying. Right. The original story was wild because I mean. They laid out so many pictures, so many scenarios, yeah. things that I was like, dang, somebody was like. That, if that's really? private. That was private detector, detective, I think, hired yeah. by one of their spouses. And I believe that it was her, wow. the, his, his spouse. Interesting. I mean, I'm really on the edge of my seat to see how this unfolds. I do know that Andrew Shu yes. uh, erased all pictures of her from his Instagram. Well, he also removed his podcast that he was co-hosting with her mother. What? Yes. Another a deep dive I did. He had a We've, podcast with her mom? Yeah. And another comedian, <laughs> comedian Chuck Nice. The three of them had a parenting podcast. Wow. And that's been erased from the internet. <sighs> He's so cute. Yeah. He's cute, too. And she's, then, and then she's also, got a lot of cute guys then, in her life. And then he and she wrote a book. About um, blended families and you know, um, a children's book about chipnucks, chip, chipmunks and squirrels living together okay. in a tree house yeah. with podcast equipment. <laughs> wow. And today at How to Make a Family Work and a Podcast. Dang, and okay. so that, that also could have pushed her to the edge of being like, dude, go do something else. Yeah. I'm going to go fuck my co-host TJ. Oh, wow, man. That was just a year ago, less than a year ago, that children's book came out. That's usually the nail in the coffin. <laughs> it's, I think both. Are, I, I, I think don't a know. podcast with your mother <laughs> in law. Uh-huh. Podcast with your mother in law. Not a great idea. And children's book. And then a children's book. Hmm. Those are two things that so kind of kind of kind of close up the vagina like a <laughs> get a little dry down she, there. She needed a little, some excitement yeah. in her life. So what what do you see unfolding in this story? What's your prediction? I do think, um, okay, I'll tell you exactly what I think. Yeah. I like I, that you come up with this like this. This is what I hope. <laughs> okay. Because I feel like women 
it's always women are have like the scarlet letter. Yeah. But being that he's a serial cheater, one has been confirmed by, you know, page six okay. with the married producer. One has been confirmed by Heather McDonald, Juicy Scoop, alleged. Okay. It's been confirmed allegedly. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. Um and that was like back in like two thousand and five yeah. or something. Well, I, but well, I was before your say, prediction, hold on. Uh, yes. Sorry, not to interrupt the, you queen, can't interrupt. the queen and her prediction. You can't interrupt. Yeah. Um, usually when these stories come out, if there's other skeletons in your closet, it then gives other people free reign to reveal, like the person okay. writing you, sh- sh- these people might all uh, be yeah. writing page six or whoever. Uh, come, come too. So yeah, there might be, out. there coming might out. be more coming. We don't know. What's your prediction? My prediction is he gets the boot. Oh. And she gets to stay. I don't know how that could, I don't know how that could happen. No, because he also had the other affair. I feel like it's both. It would either be okay. They would either have to both go or both stay. I don't. I, I think. Don't. I think it's. I mean, yeah, but then they said they said it in the very beginning. Having this relationship is not grounds for firing. Right. But then there's that gray area of where contracts say we can fire you for a moral clause. Mm. But is a moral clause. Having an adult consensual, se- a con- adult consensual sexual relationship with someone who's already separated from their spouse, and their spouse knows because that's the story they told. And I don't think their spouses really want them to get divorced. Do you think Andrew Shu, who doesn't have a podcast with his mother-in-law anymore and a children's book about chipmunks, do you think he really wants her to lose her two million dollar job a year? Probably not. Probably not because he can collect alimony. So I think they're gonna. The spouses yeah. should probably sign off and say we were separated already, yeah. so there was no cheating. Therefore, therefore, what they did together is not a moral. Uh, you know, mistake or whatever. I think for either of them to get fired over this legally makes it dicey for the company. Right. Because of what you're saying. How, how do you determine what, who determines the moral line? You know what I mean? And, or and, I got it already. Oh, they, they, oh. <laughs> they both resign. Okay. They and get both a severance resi- package. Get a huge fucking severance package. Uh huh. She starts her own podcast with her mother. With her mom. <laughs> Which is the same mom. <laughs> on divorce. <laughs> on, on divorce, third time's a charm or whatever. She'll, and TJ does the same. Okay. But he does it with other men that have cheated on their wives and like how to get over this. And he and Amy are a couple, but only for about nine months. And then that's it. They break up. Okay. Because well. she finds out he's been cheating. But maybe at this point she's like, what ifs? Maybe it's that good that she's like, hey, what ifs? Mm, everything that's that good, if it starts to become complicated. Yeah. Like, I think there's a difference between you finish a show, you're on the high of the show, maybe he's touching you under the table or whatever, yeah. and you're like, and next we'll be, uh, we'll be right back with a great new ABC fun family lineup. And then it's like, mm-hmm, you know? <laughs> and then right. it's that quick kind of boning mm-hmm. that's just, don't even take off your clothes. It's like that, that secretive that up over the, over the, uh, you know. Over the Sphinx? No, over the <laughs> skirt. I was going to say, what do you call it? The secretary skirt, like that okay. like tight skirt. Pull that up. Mm. In a small room, that's Someone, where they meet, or someone's, or their dressing rooms. They bone there. It's a quick mm-hmm. bone, and then that's the fun. And then, and then while she's with Andrew, and he's like, you know, I thought of a great idea for a follow up to our children's book. She's like, mm hmm. And then he's like, I fucking can still taste you. Like she, he gets a text oh, like that. Somebody's been having oh. fantasies. Of, someone's having. I've, a I've watched Good Morning American America fantasy over no, there. No, infidelity is my favorite genre of, t- <laughs> t- of TV and television. It's and my favorite genre. It is anything about infidelity. Okay. is like my favorite thing to see out. On yeah. TV or in movies. Okay. So that's something that happens where it's like yeah. you're like the mom and you're like, yes, I'm going to get. Do you have her soccer shoes? 
And then like, and, and then, then gets you get the, the dirty text. Yeah, and then you're, and then you have to go to the bathroom, change your and underwear. She's like, you're so wet. From oh, the, I was making peanut yeah. butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah, with a crust cut off, and now I'm just, I just now I'm, I'm just remembering lightheaded. my co-host inside yeah. me. Yeah. Wow, Heather. Sorry. Oh, dang. God. Keep I... it in your pants over there, you juicy anyway, scooper. There you go. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's a sexy scoop for you. Are you someone that ever wants to go to Art Basel? I mean, I never have. I, uh, it's one of those things I definitely would have predicted that someone would have, would have invited me to yeah. by now, and I would have experienced to it. buy some art or just to the just to like champagne. be invited to a party or like, hi, oh my god, come to this thing, yeah. put you on this list. We're friends. We're going to dinner before. Has not happened. It's kind of like the Sundance of. I thought that, Miami, right? I thought that would happen for me too, and then this year it was supposed to. Yeah, and then they canceled it because of COVID. They can't. They cancel which part? Sundance. It's Sundance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's we, like people are going. They're like, we're going there for movies. Really, they're just going there for parties and gifting suites. Right. The same with this. There's like it's for the art, but really they want to party. Anyway, two like artists uh-huh. started their art like in the I don't know. This was part of the art. Where one girl squeezed the breast of the other oh. to milk it. Now, some people said we thought it we might have been a prosthetic boob where the okay. milk was coming out. Others were like, no, that was her tit. And they were like, who wants to buy this milk? And they started an auction to build, to have the milk of this woman that everyone's watching her squeeze yeah. the milk out. Anyway, it got up to 200000 <gasps> but then they kicked them out of the thing because they, I guess it, they thought it was inappropriate. Did they not have a permit to begin with? I don't know. <laughs> Some two ladies just sit down. They bring their own stool <laughs> and, and their own poster board. Like, that's, how did they get all the way to the auction I, I don't even understand. <laughs> but I'm just like, I'm, I just think... I feel like we're definitely in an era coming in where the, you know, the emperor has no clothes. We are starting to figure out all the fake people, all uh-huh. the dumb, th- and this feels very fake and weird yeah. and like not fake, but just like really, this is art. Oh come right. on! Like, what's gonna be next? Like me just taking a bucket and peeing like in the middle. Would that be art? Maybe. That's what I'm doing. Art Basel it's next sub- year. I'm gonna subjective. pull up my skirt and I'm just gonna pee. And I'm going to be like, why can't a woman just pee in public? Why? Why? I, and then, I, like, it's a femininity why? thing. Yeah. I'm just picturing some security guard being like, um, there's a boob out right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, the fact that someone was going to pay $200,000 for it. And also, there's a lot of follow-up questions. They got yeah. kicked out. Did the person who bid, like, give them their Venmo? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Did I prefer Zell. But yeah. anyway. Um, okay. Do you know what's going on with Todd Chrisley? I saw, I mean, I don't know the latest, latest, but I saw the sentencing. Is there more from since then? So will you look up, Annie? Yeah. Do we know when they're going? Is there any word on when they're going? So, of course, they both, this is Todd and Julie Chrisley of Chrisley Knows Best. He's looking, I think it was 12 years and she at seven. Yeah. Um, Everything they did, it's not one misunderstanding of like, oh, I didn't file something. No, it's years and years and years of like bank fraud, bankruptcy, really renting houses you didn't pay for that and you lied about your FICO score to get in. Oh, yeah, because I haven't that. looked. In, I haven't looked into what actually happened. It's I knew so it was, much stuff. I knew it was like tax stuff. Didn't didn't right? pay taxes for years. Didn't file or pay taxes for years while you're on a TV show. Like literally, did not file taxes. For years that, that you are on the U.S., like you're on the television. Yeah. And you got paid an enormous amount of money to be the star of the show, yeah. and you just didn't file, nor did you pay. But are they... You will report to prison just after New Year's on January 15th. January 15th, 15th, they have to... So they have... they So they have this... Um, these kids. So he has two kids from his first marriage. Okay. That one kid is named Kyle, and he had a child with this woman named okay. and I think her name is. Um, let me see if they say her name. Angela Johnson is her name. Okay. And um, and he um had some drug issues. The son, and I guess she had some issues. She ended up going to jail uh-huh. for doing some fraudulent stuff with Medicaid. Okay. So then. They, he and his wife, the grandpa and the grandma, got custody of the little girl who's now 10. Okay. And she's featured on the show and everything. That's the little girl right there. Yeah. Okay. And she's featured on the show and everything. And 
this, the mom is like, the biological mom is like, well, now that the two grandparents who took custody of my biological child are going to prison yeah. and I am here, can uh-huh. I have my child back? You know, you took my child because I did this horrific crime of like doing something a little bit fraudulent with Medicaid or whatever. And it turns out they were and they did like more fraudulent. They, they're they're like um, they have to give back like a million dollars, eleven million dollars or some ridiculous Whoa, that's amount. That's a lot of money. Yeah. So, uh, so I, how old is this? Do we know how old she is now? She's like ten. And and, and so the younger daughter, who's twenty five, uh-huh. said, "I will." Said before this woman spoke up last week, she goes. I'm going to have custody of my 16-year-old brother, who's this younger kid here, uh-huh. and now he's 16. I'm going to have um, – and and my little sister-slash-niece, really. Yeah. And so this woman's trying to get the custody back. Wow. I just I just thought yeah. it was, like, pretty – it just goes – it just the, the, the fraud of, like, you know, oh, we're going to have this – you know, we're going to get this child. And they may have thought that that might have been best for the child. And I don't know if this woman is good – you know, right. you like, know yeah, that it might be best that she stays with 25 year old Savannah, but I just thought that was pretty interesting. And they, and they, I guess, laid it out in court that the the wife was all, all knowing about all this stuff. Like they were, yeah. In, I mean, oh, okay. there was there was more that he did because there was more emails with him and this the guy that turned it all in and that guy's getting three years. I heard about that where guy, he, yeah. yeah, and he said we had a gay relationship and everything and he's right. like, no, he was obsessed with me. The person I am s- obsessed with is my wife, Julie, who I love to make love to all the time while we read the Bible in between. <laughs> and so, yes, she, there was enough evidence that she was aware. She and then she did her it. own thing. Like one of the things that she did completely on her own was – uh, falsify a credit report to make her FICO look higher and literally she like would take it and like cut it with scissors mm-hmm. and like and then like make a copy of it like it wasn't even like good photoshopping oh. I don't know how people even come up with stuff I <laughs> and don't then know brought, and then got, rented this house in LA uh-huh. and then um, never paid oh and then you know take, you know how happen? long it takes to get people out yeah, in Calif in L A. Oh no, no, like six months. Oh really? Yeah. So they used squat there, and okay, and so I'm like, you know, so this was while they were on TV. Yeah, because they've been on TV for like ten years. I, mean, that's, I, I it's always fascinating to me that people, very known people, are doing this stuff because it feels like it always comes out. I think it's just the ultimate form of like narcissism that uh-huh. you just think like, my shit don't stink, right? I can do whatever I want. I can yeah. spend whatever I want. I can take whatever I want, mm-hmm. and then act like, "Oh my God!" You know the wa- and like as we listened to their podcast, and I said they sounded like Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, oh, like they're right. and they're not. Their show wasn't even like necessarily religious, but you know right. now that they're now they're truly having the come to Jesus moment, and they're yeah. really and and you know when they taught it is it is comforting. I don't know if you've ever watched like evangelists on tv like oh, growing God, up girl, i kind of liked it i remember i was like i liked it like it was calming to me i was like yes and they'd be like child when you look up at that big sky and you know that the lord has wrapped his arms around you like a little child i'd be like ah yeah like i i mean i like even listening to this i know that they're so full of shit but i'm like well i kind of love that they have each other's back That's like so they're funny. like a hundred percent like we love each other yeah and they're going to go yeah. away for so long, and I'm just so curious to see, like, will they really be that couple that writes each other for right. all those years and then come out as, like, two old little non-plastic surgery old faces? Because, I mean, he's, like, I think he's, like, 52. I think they're, like, both, like, 50-something. So He used to love Chelsea Lately. Did you know that? No, yeah. but I can see it. Yeah, I, I was on a plane once, and he was, like, it was, I mean, years and years. The well, show, was, the show was still on. Yeah, and he said he was a huge fan of the show. Again, um, <laughs> not a lot of straight men loved Chelsea lately. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just telling you what he said. Annie just told me there's somebody. She went to the the grocery store, and this guy's like, "Oh, how's your day going?" You know, he's checking. He she said she said he was checking her out. I'm like, "Okay, yeah. stop your bragging." She's like, "No, he was actually checking me out, like putting my oh. things in the back." <laughs> So then she went on to actually say what she does for a living and yeah. everything. And so he's a huge juicy scooper. Look and at I, that. And I go, well, do you think he was gay? And she's like, 
He was. What did he you? Wasn't say? presenting gay. She, he yeah, was she's presenting said, gay. Yeah, he was masculine presenting male. Yes, that's what you say now. I don't know if you know that. I'm. That's I'm the proper learning. way to say it. Um, get with the program. All right, Fortune. <laughs> um, but I know there are some guys now that listen to my show. But yeah. anyway, Todd Chrisley. You know what? Make lemonade out of lemons when you're in prison. They might get out. They people get out early. <laughs> no federal. You have to do like eighty five percent. Oh really? Okay. I don't. You it's, look, a, it's a little bit nicer of a prison situation. Like, like that. How Martha you know, Stewart said. Yeah, because it, you are with like non. You're not with murderers oh, not and with, stuff. Oh, okay. So it's That's like good. you can like do a little more with your day and like feel a little safer. Okay. But, Interesting. Maybe it'll be ripped when he gets out. It's such a long time. <laughs> Speaking of which, do you know who this guy is? Uh, that was the Stormy Daniels guy? Michael Avavan- uh, Avenatti. Uh, uh-huh. He just got 14 years in Whoa. prison. Oh, didn't he try to... Um, didn't he try to... Uh, he basically was a Tom Girardi light. Oh. So he did a lot of things. He tried to extort somebody, He tried right? to extort... But like extort, Nike... Wasn't it Nike? Nike for $25 I mean, million. But also Nike, like of yeah. all... Like they would have the the biggest lawyers in the world. He basically went and was like, we're going to like go... We're going to go to a press conference and like expose the story of where you guys look awful with this player or you give me $25 million. That was that. But you got in trouble for that. Stormy Daniels... He represented Stormy Daniels and screwed her over he, like, somehow her for her book. Yeah, like yeah, she never got her money from him. Um, and then he basically there were all these cases that he did for people, at kind of like a Tom Girardi, where then he'd have a windfall oh. and he'd be like, "Oh my gosh, Fortune, you got you know ten million dollars. That's so great. Yeah, here here's a million. Oh. Um, this nine million, I I just." don't want like weird people to come after you. Oh so I'm going to just like, I'm going to do this with These it or I'm going to finance it or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to make it even more. And then the little guy would start, try to come back. Like, where's my money? And yeah. it's like, Oh, you, you poor loser. Like, you know, oh. and then that's what would happen. Then you're like, well, I guess I should just be happy with the 1 million I got, even though I'm like, whatever in a wheelchair. Well, you feel like you can't fight. Some yeah. Lawyer guy. You like know? one of the guys, he was, he was hurt in a prison. Like he was in a prison and he like, fell off a balcony or something. Uh-huh. And so he sued and got all this money from the prison and then screwed over that guy. Oh. So he'd act like he was, I'm for the little guy. Oh, like, I'm for the little guy, but yeah. then he would take all the money. I had... What's up with all this white-collar crime? I had a dinner with him. Oh, really? Yeah. He was on a... He was, this is years ago, uh-huh. and Kelly Dodd of OC is yeah. like, do you want to meet me out I have a date with this guy. and uh, Was she on a date with him? Kind of. Like, he was meeting her there. And um, she's like, he's kind of like this hot attorney. I don't know. He's like trying to sue Donald Trump or something. I'm like, yeah, I want to go. And I'm like, this sounds like a juicy <laughs> dinner. And then two, uh, like, and then this this gay it couple. It's more, was... more of a meet cute than a date. Yeah. And then, he, so, and then these two other gay guys. So we go to dinner and... You know, he he was hot. Like, he's a little bit short for me. Oh, he's hot? I thought he was Let pretty hot. I thought he was pretty hot. Okay. And very charming. Yeah. Told really good, juicy stories oh. about his you, first wife. You love that. Yeah, his first wife was cheating on him. He told me how he found out. Then he got this other, then he had another wife, I think, and then another girl with a, a baby. I don't know, he had all this, but he was single, and he was, like, pursuing Kelly, but it didn't work out. She married somebody else. But, um... And then I saw him at another party, Leah Black's party, and I was like, will you come on Juicy Scoop? And I texted him, and we were texting, and he's like, sure, come to my office Wednesday. He, like, got arrested on Monday, whatever that was. <laughs> he I, missed being on I Juicy know, Scoop. I know, <laughs> I know. Do you time. think he told the FBI, <laughs> guys, can we make this Thursday? I'm supposed to I have to, to go to Juicy Woodland Scoop. Hills. <laughs> Apparently they validate the parking, and it's going to be worth my time. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just postpone this three more days? I have to be on the juicy scoop. <laughs> anyway, again, these people are getting a lot of time. Elizabeth Holmes. Oh, yeah. What she, she got get? 11 years. Oh, he also has to pay back $11 million. So he got 14 years. Todd and Julie, yeah. Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, and now Jen Shaw. We're going to find out what Jen Shaw's fate is. When's that coming? That's like June. Uh, that's like January wow. something. 
Well, I mean, you know, you break. Um, Meghan Markle's podcast producer quits days after the Archwell chief resigns. What's Archwell chief? I feel like I learned about all Annie's, the scoop. Annie's, I learned all the scoop from you. Annie's I don't ever know she's what's going to I don't know why this girl quit. You never know. It doesn't mean that Megan was a nightmare or anything, but you know, she, this is kind of interesting. So they they did the first season of the podcast. Okay. They're like, we don't know if the podcast is going to come back, and I'm like, you don't know if the podcast is going to come back. There's literally this girl when she took the job is like yeah. standing in front of the biggest building with this entire, like in the middle of L.A. like. Arch, oh really? Archwell or whatever it's called, like, and I'm like, God, it, it, is that the name of the podcast? Yes. Oh, I, see. I mean, but anyway, so she quit, and so did this other person quit. Yeah. So then the documentary comes out. Okay. And I haven't seen that the documentary. You, it comes out like no, it comes out like the ninth or something. Oh, it hasn't come the out. The trailer yet. comes out. I see. The trailer has four different photo situation video like videos where they're showing like paparazzi chasing them yeah that has been proven to be stock footage from something else really yes so well, that... according to yahoo and, okay. and many others one photo is harry being hounded by the press and it's been cropped to hide that it was actually taken in 2007 when he was with his ex-girlfriend chelsea davi but is this proven or this is yeah. this is uh, hearsay. No, these have been proven. Um, the second one was, um, let me just get to it. The second one this guy wrote, this is from um, Jesus, Enrique Rosa said, Those, the paparazzi, paparazzi right after Harry and Meghan, this distressed shot, uh -huh. um, is from a Katie Price photo shoot, huh. not what they're trying to present. Then... The other one was, um, there's another one that seems like the press is being intrusive as Harry and Meghan walk with their son, Archie, and he was just a baby. And then this guy who was the photographer says, this photograph was of Harry and, and Mary, Meghan to suggest intrusion by the press is complete travesty. It was taken from an accredited, accredited pool at the Archbishop of Tudu's residence in Cape Town. Only three people were in the accredited position and Harry and Meghan agreed to the position I was there. Huh. So there's like a photo of like, it looks like a guy's taking a photo and they're walking with their baby and right. the way the trailer is, is just like the nightmare that they lived. Very oh. similar to Diana. Oh, okay. And like, oh my God. And he's like, I have to protect her and yeah. this and that. And then this is my favorite. Huh. This photo the image used in the trailer was actually taken at the London premiere of Harry Potter and the Deadly Hollows. Well, that is shocking that people. That is De shocking Deadly that Hallows. the premiere was Deadly that. Deadly Hollows. <laughs> the premiere was that huge. Well, it was 2011. Is, look at all those photographers. So the thing is, does it mean that Harry and and Megan said, "I have a great idea. Get other photos that make it look more like we've uh -huh. been hounded." I think this is the mistake of the production company. Like they're just using stock photos. Yeah, to, that, that to make it look heightened, yeah. and they and the eagle eyes like figured it out, literally matched it with the same people and everything to say it. This is right. according to Yahoo. Well, Lifestyle. their lives are and 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 Radar Online also reported it, and I had already seen other things on right. it. So I think it is true. So I mean that, and they are so picked apart. Like every thing they say and everything they do that. If someone else d decided this for them, I would be pissed because right. you would know, like, God, we are so, you know, picked apart with everything. Of course, people are going right. to, you know, pick apart this, too. I would think it would fall on whatever production company did their documentary. Yeah. I mean, that's who it's not. Also, it's not even like Netflix. Netflix isn't going to be like, now, was this photo from? No, you, sh you show the film and they're like, looks great. Yeah. Let's play it. Let's watch it. And I mean, it's not like she would remember. Were they know? at that premiere, though? No, because this was 2011. So they weren't even together oh, in 2011. Oh, right, right. That's true. It's interesting. I'll be watching. And then, I'll be watching. And then here. I'm going to watch it too. Someone made this Heather and Peter, the documentary, coming spring. <laughs> and then they wrote, this is Jacob. He's a juicy scoop. Of, oh, Jacob have. Oh, have like. That's right. Out. And he said, when the stakes are this high. W wouldn't you want to hear it from us? <laughs> there you go. 
Look at Peter's. Peter's I, Peter looks so good in like a like in a nice blazer. <sighs> Has he worn a blazer? No. In a and even at the Christmas party that you missed, I know Brandy of uh, Brandy and Julie. She's like. I'm like in a fucking gown, like a, like a cocktail dress. <laughs> Why did you wear a gown? I wore a cocktail dress. Okay. Because it was my party and I'm taking photos. And I well, just was like, I expect I you wanted to wear to look, a... I wanted to just like, you know, how many times you can you even get dressed up? Right. So I knew I'd be overdressed. Okay. But I was like. <laughs> and Peter didn't match your I, I was like, you know what? It's not even worth the effort. But like. Did you ask, I, you didn't ask him to wear a blazer? I asked him to, I. No, I was kind of like more thinking about what I was wearing getting out the door. Right. And. And then, like, like a short sleeve collared shirt, like that's it, like not even a long sleeve. Uh, um, but I'm glad Brandy called him out. She's like, "Are you si like really <laughs> for the annual Christmas party?" He's Where's like, your blazer, Peter? Nice. <laughs> um, you got this show pony over here dressed up. <laughs> um, uh, Lady Gaga's. This is finally justice has happened. Remember the pugs? Yeah. Um, well, this so guy the dog should walkers, get punishment. It, he literally it, shot her and dog thank walker. God he did. He got convicted of um, attempted murder. So I mean, he's doing he should. Twenty-one years. I know the poor dog walker. And yeah. anyway, it was it was proven that absolutely her dogs were not. They didn't know uh, the. They were just targeting a, a random person, good-looking dogs right. that are purebreds. I mean, can, yeah, I'm sure that once they realized it was a very famous person, no, they were that's like, so that's when they dropped it off to try to get the money, yeah, right, to yeah. try to get the ransom. Oh my god! But he got 21 years. Um, I don't know if you ever do this, Fortune, but you should not, because Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose, uh -huh. he. For the last 30 years, you do a tradition of tossing his microphone into the crowd. Oh, no. After, but he is not going to do it anymore after he hit an Australian woman who has now has two black eyes. How did one mic cause that? I don't know how you'd have two. And look, that microphone in particular looks like it has a soft thing on the top, but unless the bar part hit her. You know you what? Know, like, I kind of wonder about that. Now I'm kind of wondering, do we have to... It could be that it hit her so hard on the nose, and maybe it, that the then the blood, yeah, the, came down the, here. yeah, because yeah. when I fell, when I fainted, the, and the, I hit the back of my head, then my eyes became black, and it wasn't. I never fell on my face. You're so lucky that you were okay from that. I was thinking I about that the other day. Me too. People like die from that stuff. I know, and I can't believe I was like in the hospital for two days. So I'm like never in the hospital. Thank yeah. God, I'm so lucky. That I'm like, the last time I was in the hospital, I came home with a baby. So and as I'm far like, as I can tell, no brain damage. No. <laughs> the only thing I have, the only residual effect I have, which they said I could have this up to two years, so it'll be one year in February, uh -huh. is sometimes if I lay down or get up really quick or something, I feel a little like... A little lightheaded. Like a little... Di like I just stop for a second. I feel yeah. a little dizzy. You bang your and, head so Yeah, hard. but that's it. Otherwise... Crazy. Um... Jesse James. Do you remember what a delight this is? Um, I remember James. we were on Chelsea when he cheated. The biggest with, scandal. On, on so Sandy Jesse Bullock. James is this guy that was really at his height when he was married to Sandra Bullock. Everybody loved his TV loved show. Him. He had a show on cable about like motorcycles. Yeah. And it was just like he was like a sexy, like tattooed. But like every man, but like, but like when manly. He got, when he so, got like Sandra Bullock, I yeah. was like, because she was like the girl. She yes. was like America girl Sweetheart. next door. Like every movie crushed. I mean, still. But people were like, I thought it was like a good move for her. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, you're with this hot like tattooed guy that's like into like. Manly thing. I was not into it. I, I didn't. Like, I didn't have a uh -uh. problem with it. I was not into it. Do you remember how angry people got when Julia Roberts dated Lyle Lovitz? Yeah, they did like, not like that. Were, like visceral, horrible reaction. I'm yeah. like, God. Like people are just like, he's so ugly. How could she? I'm like, God. Poor guy. Poor guy. I know. <laughs> but this one, I felt like people were like. It's kind of sub supportive of they're like, they're like, it's like a mix, it. whatever. Yeah. And then, so I looked, okay, so anyway, he got in trouble with his pregnant former porn oh, star, no. fifth wife. Her this last is, name is Rotten? This is, <laughs> <laughs> it says Bonnie Rotten. That's what this says. Yeah, I don't know if that's maybe, I don't know if that's her real name or her stage oh, name. Oh, okay. Because she was a porn star. I see. Anyway, 
She is his fifth wife. Fifth. Wow. And uh, he has he, three kids. And expecting- after three, you should just date. Don't you think? Yeah. Do you, like, why get the government involved? I think there's just guys and people that just are total serial love bombers. Yeah. And I think he's a serial love bomber and a serial cheater. And so he comes on hard. I think from everything I've read, yeah. he does have a huge dick. They okay. used to call it the white elephant. All those <laughs> girls that had to drive to Long Beach to bone him in his back room. Remember they, that? All those oh, back yeah. in the days when you just had to get the news from like in touch. Yeah. And it was hot tattooed girl after hot tattooed girl. Yeah. That was like, oh, I, I met him and I boned him. And like poor Sandra Bullock is like, what the fuck? I had no clue. She's off filming Miss Congeniality too. <laughs> no, she had just I done Blindside. I That's love the thing. Her. She won the Oscar for Blindside and he was in the audience and she did not know that he was cheating Ugh. on her and she like she toasted him. him. Oh. Yes. And then like the days later, the story broke. That's the worst. So this girl gets pissed and she goes on her stories and she's like, I can't believe I've been betrayed. This guy cheated on, he cheated on me while I'm pregnant. He goes on and is like, what's everyone talking about? Anyway, she stopped the filing. She's back with him. And she's like, I just want to enjoy my pregnancy. So shut up. But then I looked up that at one time he was engaged to Kat Von D. Yeah. Twice. They Mm -hmm. broke up, got back engaged. And she then said, no, he cheated on me with so many women. Yeah, but he's like, that's his. Everyone I know. knows that. Whoever he's with at this point, they just be her. this girl, Bonnie Rotten. Well, if she's sticks around or not, he cannot be with someone who thinks he's going to be monogamous. He's not ever. Yeah. So if you're with him, you have to know that you're signing up for him to do. I'm not saying it's right, but you have to know that he's going to be with many women. Yeah. And and for for any woman to think he's gonna be monogamous, but just based on his history, it just doesn't seem that that that's gonna add up. Well, she's a porn star, so I think they have like a pretty cool understanding of probably like, hey, you've done some stuff and I've done some stuff, but together, like our love has never been hotter, and we're so in sync, and we're, I mean, you're, yeah. I want you to have my fucking baby, you know. So then she's all like wrapped up in it, and then she looks on his phone and realizes he's cheating right. again. And all of the cheating's been like well documented, like it's not like a hearsay. Like no, I looked up the Wikipedia oh, and okay. like I went like saw because I was like, is she wife for? Four or five, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but she decided, no, I hope hoping that I just want to enjoy right. my pregnancy and stay married to Jesse James. I mean, he probably is like, babe, I mean, you got a good life, right? You like you like you like your purse. Uh, I, you know, a man, you like your a purse. man's got needs. I imagine that's the conversation. I think he probably said you're crazy. I was just talking to this girl. Oh, gaslighting. Yeah. That's the other word that yeah. you I yeah. heard you on a podcast yeah. a couple weeks ago yeah. saying gaslighting right. and love bombing are right. the two yeah. big words. But I think he he is that a hundred percent. And then he was just like and then she was just like, What am I gonna do? Like I, I'm a porn star. Like I not that she's having sex whatever, I don't know if she's still doing it, but like she probably was like, All right, just don't lie to me. So I wanna let give me, you all the plugs. Let me, pop, let me pop behind Heather and put my arm around her. <laughs> Viva Las Las Vegas! Vegas. (laughs) Um, Do you know the story about Aubrey O'Day when she had an affair with Donald Trump Jr.? I vaguely remember this. So, and that was confirmed. I mean, she's confirmed it. Oh, but he never did. No, I think he just ignores it. Okay. Um, The story that she told. And that she refers to in page six okay. is writing. This is from page six that she um, she called she referred to Donald Trump Jr. as her soulmate Whoa. in her first public interview about their long rumored affair. So she had done like a live podcast or something years ago okay. at the Improv that basically she told the story. Maybe didn't say him, but it was like people figured it out. She said when she was on The Apprentice. Okay. At that time, Donald was not running for president. He was on the show. He was married. I don't know how many kids he had at the time. Yeah, I don't know how many times, but he was married at the time. He's since gotten divorced. Okay. And is um, engaged to Kimberly. Oh, that's right. Who is the former wife of Democrat 
Oh, Gavin, Gavin Newsom. Newsom. That's right. Which yeah. is just some juicy history that not everybody knows. Yeah, kind of ju- makes it fun. A little juicy. Okay. Juicy anyway. Edition. So she just said, like, you know, they had this amazing attraction and. Like the like, she gets into the details of it and how like they had this full on affair while she was doing the Apprentice yeah. and and like she really thought it it was like gonna work like yeah. that maybe they could go on further and like have, be a real couple and everything yeah. and um and everyone's like okay fine okay. like twenty years ago like who cares yeah and now I don't know I think she's kind of a lost soul now she's stick. bringing it up again yeah and he's like engaged and like. And it was like ten years and ago, like, girl, and like you're like girl, and he got divorced. So like, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. And so if he had felt the same way once he got divorced, he could have rekindled that, but he didn't. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. Oh wait, here was that. Okay, now this is this thing that every I'm seeing everybody do on Instagram. Okay. Lensa is the app behind your friend's new profile pics. Here's what artists have to say about it. So. We're seeing these crazy photos that's supposed to be what you look like if you're going to be in the AI world okay. or how they might see you in the future. Yeah. And now there's some people being like, I don't know about this, like how everyone's putting their faces on there. It could be a little bit dangerous. And, and you're yeah, like, you're like giving them like, I don't know. Access was, to your photos. Yeah, or, or DNA. So it costs like can 10, DNA be involved in this in any way? I don't know, but like, so my friend Kristen did it for me. Cost 10, no, you get 10, the app is $10, I guess. And then you have to give them a bunch of photos. Okay. You have to give them at least 10 photos, I guess. I will say this. I've seen a lot of people's pictures. Yeah. And f- so far from what I've seen, it's making people way better looking. Oh, way better than looking. Than what they look like. So we... She did it for me. She just pulled them off the internet. Okay. And then she did it for you. Oh, so God. So here's mine. I oh. freaking love it. Look how gorgeous look I am. That. that. I is... look, I mean, stunning. Like, I definitely want to go in the AI world. Uh, yeah, you get this. I'm, like, totally fine. Like, uh, that is fine. If I if I could, like, snap and actually look like that in the world. I think the new thing is that mirrors are going to have, like, filters. Oh, yeah. We don't want to know the truth. You don't want to know the truth. Yeah. And then you wake up and you're like, I look fucking great. And you feel great, great about yourself. Yeah. But that's good. Just like you do when you, like, are doing, like, a story and you put on a filter and you're talking and, and you're, then, like, and and you're then, like, you can't figure out why no one will ask you out on a yeah. date. <laughs> like, I'm gorgeous. What's happening? I mean, stunning. Oh. And then, like, look how big. Look at my- those big knockers. And they're like, it's a, like a, it's a kind of my neck and kind of my boobs, but the boobs are even better. The boobs are enormous. Even better. Better. But the y- arms are your thinner. Your face looks like a celebrity here. I'm trying to pinpoint the, I don't like these wrinkles around my mouth. Well, yeah, but- the mouth... The mouth part's like a surgeon did something wrong yeah. over here. Or you had a scar. This is my favorite. Giant knockers again. And like extra long hair extensions. Yeah. Whoa, your AI wants you to just I rock mean like them. I mean you have bit you have Tig old biddies. Yes, but they're but like in boobs, a good w- in a good way. But these boobs are a little different than mine and I like these yeah. boobs better. Anyway, no, then we, we have you. Oh my god. Why am I worse? That's worse. How am I the only person whose AI looks worse? Everyone else looks like a freaking amazing, like, star of a movie. I look insane. No, you don't look. Oh, my (laughs) God. No. This, and there's no way you ever wore a, a I, sleeveless shirt. Now like that. listen, I am a chunky gal, but that is that's. But what's wrong with your fingers? Look at them. <laughs> I something went awry. What pictures did they submit? Because this is just wrong. Okay, I'm supposed to look gorgeous. I don't know if you're ready for this next. No, one. <laughs> I can't. My heart can't take this. What? You have three arms. So, my what? AI got somehow. The, the, something went awry. You have three. Okay, so she why has you, one arm, and then she has the other arm has two hands. Why do you look out like a it. princess and I have three arms? But your tits look huge. But your that's body nice. looks good. They make you your body more the sexual. Bodies like got more curves to it. But and then I, this what one, is that means again? Yes, and now you don't have any forearms. Why? I don't know why they're making you an why? amputee. What some pictures were submitted? <laughs> What's happening? This doesn't make any sense. This is, I am not paying for this app to look like this. 
Who submitted these pictures? My friend Krista. I said, just do it for Fortune. Oh, my. I feel like... Did you, there were more. And I just... These no, are the best these ones. Are terrible. <laughs> Literally, everyone who's posted their pictures look like they would, are starring in a, a like a future like Avatar, movie. but with prettier people with a n- and more narrow gorgeous. nose. Yeah, I have three arms, weird nubs on one thing, and no <laughs> hands. Oh my gosh! I don't know why this is disturbing. I'm sorry. Well, thank you for sharing that. Is this also my avatar? <laughs> Do you want to talk about... Let's just talk about Britney really quick. Do you know that she took down her Instagram again? What? She, this is the third time she's taken it down in four months. I like her on Instagram. You like those nudie I'll photos? I see them tickle bitties. <laughs> she, does, she does show her body a lot. I mean, good for her. She so she good. was showing her body a lot, and then she did another weird one when she's like, why do I look exactly like Jessica Simpson here? She so, does kind of look like Jessica Simpson. She does, so that was weird. Her body is smoking right now. I think she looks good. If these pictures are from what I... Nobody really knows. Oh, but if they're anyway, if, Yeah. No, they're her, but you wonder when are they from or what, right. what is going on. Then, you know, she's said awful things about her sister, her little sister, right. Jamie Lynn. Then, over the weekend, people are like, what is going on? Britney Spears, she writes, it's my birthday, but you're my heart, and it's a picture of Jamie playing guitar. Oh. So I'm thinking about you. Congratulations on being so brave, inspiring, and showing guts and glory in your show. You can't, but you ain't alone. If anybody knows what that feels like, I get it. My baby sis, I love you. Oh, because, yeah, she's like. And then another, and then there was another photo of Jamie, like as if she was in her kitchen, uh-huh. like like not looking like. And then you know, huh. and so immediately people are like, Jamie Lynn has taken over the Instagram. <laughs> There's no way Britney's writing. There this. are so many conspiracy theories right? about Britney. So then Britney writes this uh, this one. Okay, I'm dancing in time now, Victoria. Yes, who's Nerfed, Victoria? We don't know. Okay. Yes, nerve damage on the right side of my body. There's no cure except God, I guess. Nerve damage is caused sometimes when you don't get enough oxygen to your brain. Your brain literally shuts down. Blah, blah, blah. Old story. In that place, I didn't breathe when I was there. Nerve damage causes parts of your body to go numb. I wake up like three times a week in bed and my and my hands are completely numb. Nerves are tiny, and mm. it feels like pins and needles from the right side of my body. It shoots up to my neck, and the part that hurts the worst is my temple on my head. It stings, and it's scary. The last three years since I got out of that place, I've been in mild, unconscious state. I couldn't face it. She goes on. Yeah. Um, my faith gave me strength, all this stuff. Uh-huh. And then she goes... And then she just, it ends with, I feel smarter because, well, Jesus, I can breathe now. Either way, I'm breathing now and I can dance in time. Victoria, I send all my love to every single one of you. This is me this morning. I'm going to vacuum now. Huh. Then she takes down the whole Instagram. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So it was a bunch of weird things. Yeah. It was like, again, a bunch of uh, posts, the same post. Yeah. The husband then... They're back at their old house, which I thought they sold. Yeah. He gave her a big, like, Chris, a big birthday celebration. Okay. I mean, now finally the fans are like, yeah, we don't think she's mentally well. We don't. Oh, they are saying that? Yes. Interesting. And the fact that she does write this long thing about needing medication. Now I'm on medication, yeah. all this stuff. Is this really her? Is this Jamie? Is she. Jamie's is it not, both? There's no way your sister is doing her Instagram. All right. I don't, that, right? I mean, I don't think they're. I really don't know. I've been trying to figure out this thing for like, like two years. I don't think And I like get, it fr- anyway, it's gone now. I hope she's okay. Um, fans react as Disney sets closing date for the controversial Splash Mountain ride. Did you know that? Uh, no, I did not. You know Splash Mountain? Uh, it goes down, like it goes down a big hill and yeah. you get wet? Yeah. Yeah. But you. You don't like how many times you've been to Disneyland? Not it, that many. I'm going soon, but well, it's, you better go. But it's it, been like ten years since I've. Well, been. this ride is going to be gone soon. I don't want to ride a ride where you get soaking wet. Oh, well, you do when it's really no, hot out. But not. I don't want to like walk around with wet 
undies. Okay, well, then don't you don't have to go on it. All right. Anyway, it's extremely racist. Oh, it is. Ride. Yeah. I guess maybe I don't. Maybe I've never been on it. It's like it's from some old I like fable. Uh, anyway, they're gonna change it to be. Yeah, um, they should. They're gonna change it to be the one with the frog. Yeah, they should update. So that. it's time to update it's, it. It's Who cares? Time. This couple. They were gay. Okay. So she was kind of a masculine presenting lesbian who okay. always had girlfriends, never was in a heterosexual relationship. Yeah. And he was very feminine uh, man, uh-huh. wears eyelashes, heels, a bag. Yeah. And they met, and now they are full on heterosexual couple. It happens, baby. And, and here they are. Oh. So he they're sit, so pretty cute. He sits on her lap. I love it. And I'm like, you don't you don't like the switching it up? No, I guess they're a heterosexual couple. But in some ways, I'm like, well, isn't that just kind of like queer? Like, kind of like whatever you want? Yeah, probably. Like, but people aren't really into like. La- I mean, they are into labels and aren't. You know, yeah. it's an interesting thing. I don't know. And then she, he said, like, you know, it was really shocking for him to bring home. I'm sure he's black. Then to bring home. Um, this this, this woman. Girl. I mean, it was more about a woman, like bringing home a woman because they're like, yeah, of course, like so, you like, are really gay. And then she's like, I just like, I've always been attracted to feminine men because I'm attracted to feminine women. So now right. I'm with a feminine man. It's interesting. Good for them. Who I cares? mean, but it would be jarring, like for your family to suddenly be like, Wait, um, we, we're cool with the. Gay I want to get to the white lotus. Oh, the white lotus. Okay, everybody, white lotus. So don't tell me that I spoiled it for you. You've had time to watch it. <sighs> All right, really there's only it, one right? episode left. It was slow at first, and now it's getting good. Now I it's think. getting good, and um, I've seen two wieners now. Yes, right? Did we I miss, saw the wiener, no, or did I miss a wiener? We saw the wiener of the one guy that I call looks like um, Nick Vial. We saw him oh, when yeah. he was trying on the bathing suit. Yep, it was hanging down that with, wiener. Um, which did you like season one or two more? Um, I like season one better at first, and now this one's getting good. Yes, that's exactly how I feel. Okay. Yeah. Twins. <laughs> Always love Jennifer Coolidge, but I felt like she got to be even more eccentric in the last season. Like they've been, yeah. t- they've been having her tame kind of. Right. And now she's now we're getting a little like fun again. I I I love it. I think it's so good. I mean, yeah. I. When I talked about this last time, I kind of we kind of were like, no, they, these gay guys are not good. They're going to yeah, scam her. Yeah, I was saying her. that too. I was like, there's something up with this. And then I read something of someone's theory, and now I feel like I know how it's gonna... not the full ending, but I know I know more than what I wish I didn't like. I don't want to. Can oh, I yeah. just tell you what I think it is? Are you going to really do that to all of us that want to see the last episode? No, it's, there's articles written like of what people think, but I don't have any confirmation yeah. of what it is. I, well, it's okay, well, up did, to you. Okay, did you see when she looked at the photo of the two guys? Um, I saw. I mean, the last that one episode, she saw them banging. No. Oh but, yeah, I didn't know what that meant. The the it was okay, two well, guys. Can from I tell you what that ago. meant? That's her husband. And the gay guy. No. Yes, because remember when the gay guy said there was a cowboy once 30 years ago that I would do anything for I even about today? That. Yeah. So I think her husband is trying was, to was, scam her for her money? W- trying to have her killed. <gasps> oh. Oh, because someone dies. That's right. Yes. Interesting. I didn't even, when I saw that picture, I kept trying to be like, who. When it first started, I have to say, when it first started and the gays were, like, so into her and, like, come with us, come to dinner, you have to, and everything, I was like, oh, my God, like, her trip just got so much fun. This is, like, my dream come true. But I remember thinking, they don't know that she's super wealthy. Right. And she's not famous in the show. And she's not, like, dressed in a super wealthy way. So I'm like, these gay, that's not who gay guys get into. They get into women that are really wealthy and can pick up some something. Or they're famous. Or again. Or like Or they're so rich that they're going to go to their store and buy all their clothes from them. Or they could, like, be their their stylists or decorators. That's who they glom on to. So I'm like, I just don't understand why. Like they would be into Jennifer Coolidge, the actress. The actual Jennifer Coolidge. Hell yes. Hell yeah. But But her character, yeah. Like that's not flashing her money or anything. 
And so then I'm like, okay. And then when, of course, the the quote unquote nephew reveals my uncle isn't rich, he yeah. needs to come up with all this money to keep his houses. Yeah. And if 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 oh because he kills, if she dies, she's married to that guy, and he gets all the money, right? Because she doesn't have any children or anything. Because he he gets that phone call to come back to talking to someone. Yeah, that I'll be back. Right. Do you that, think that was the gay guy? Yes. Oh, interesting. And then, do you think that? Um, so then they I didn't they, think he was quite fit for his age. The little one, her husband. Oh, that he was fit. Yeah. Yes, I was because, like, huh, interesting, right? Because mm. gay men take better care of themselves. I know. <laughs> and so, and so then, what about when she's doing cocaine? Uh huh. And with the other guy, and who's probably an escort? Doing, yeah, right? well, of course. Yeah. yeah. And my so my sister's like, oh, what do you think they're gonna do? Like blackmail? I'm like, for what? There's no blackmailing if she bones this guy and does cocaine in Italy. Like, yeah. she has fortunes because she's, like, an heiress. Right. doesn't really matter. But then I'm like, but if I was going to try to kill someone and, like, throw her over the boat, yeah. I don't know that cocaine would be what I'd be giving her. Right. I want to give her something that kind of makes her loopy and asleep so it could be like, oh, she fell over the boat. Well, I, yeah, because I kept trying to figure out why they didn't, they, he was tasked the, the British guy with keeping her assistant away. Yeah. Because clearly he was trying to keep her from going back to the party. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I didn't even catch that part. Yeah, like she kept saying, let's get back to the party, and he kept... And his job was to... I it, think his job was to, to keep, keep her, her away. away. Oh. Yeah. yeah, well, see? There you go. And did you remember in the first episode, they go, there were two bodies? Uh-huh. There's the body that she finds in the water yeah. that I think came off of a boat okay. and would have floated towards shore. Uh-huh. And then the in the very beginning, the two people say um, that work at the hotel, no, there was another body. There's uh-huh. been two bodies. In this in this season? That was the first episode. That's how it starts. And oh, then they're like seven days I earlier. I remember the two bodies. So there's that. two bodies. <laughs> okay. I don't think that they're going to kill Jennifer. I, I feel like they listen, need her for another season. I don't want them to kill Jennifer. Uh huh. I love Jennifer. She's a friend of mine. But I wouldn't be surprised and if Mike White, mm-hmm. the writer creator, does kill her. Right. And then you know, of course, she'll work forever. They'll give her something else. Yeah. Because then, and then next season. They keep like Aubrey Plaza. Yes, they keep Aubrey Plaza. She gets divorced or something, and then yeah. she goes a, to another White Lotus. Yeah, and experience something, and then then you know how great would it be to film these shows? They go to like the, they're they're actually filming at that Four Seasons in Sicily. Yes, I hope that they don't. I hope he doesn't kill her. But I'm just saying that to I keep could it, see to keep I could juicy. see it that happening. Yeah, you know. And um, and also, I think people would be just so sad because she's just like such she's a sweetheart best, and so yeah. great. Um, okay, so this juicy scooper sent this to me. Her okay. name's Meredith. Your juicy scoopers really get to the bottom of. She things. said, "This is who. <laughs> this is a new thing that's happening." I saw it with other people. I saw a TikTok with someone doing this with just different characters, like the guy from You and uh-huh. this person from Shit's Creek. But she's doing it with just Bravo characters of who she wants to see go on the next season of White Lotus <laughs> and how she sees it can be written. Okay. Denise and Aaron are the weird couple that's trying to literally any get you watched you remember Denise from Real House as Beverly Hills. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh-huh. Denise and her husband Richard are the weird couple that's trying to get literally anyone with a pulse to swing with them. Uh-huh. Kathy Hilton basically a sub for Jennifer Coolidge. I can see that. The psychic from Beverly Hills who tells Kyle that she is not emotionally fulfilled <laughs> or whatever the fuck. She with gets the vape, a, with the vape yes, cigarette. She gets in everyone's head and makes them second guess their marriage slash life. Okay. And they are turned on, and they turn on their spouse, Lala. Kent, my friend, and Ocean. I think we need a single parent and a child dynamic going. Okay. They're from Vanderpump. The Dubro family of OC, they have gay children, and I think that they are high class as fuck and better than everyone else, like pissing off the guests. They're on a family trip. Yes, and they'd okay. be pissing off the, the right. pissing the other guests off. And then Rosie from New Jersey and her mom, they own the hotel. Okay. That's been in the Fair family for generations. All right. Then she did one more, season two, oh. of her of her Bravo okay. meets White Lotus. Sandy and Schwartz from 
Vanderpump. They're not gay, but in oh, this, okay. they're gay. They're a gay couple who cause havocs on the hotel, possibly ruining marriages. <laughs> okay. Mary Cosby, she's from Salt Lake City, who ran a um, a church where she was a cult leader, is a free hotel guest whose sole purpose is to annoy the hotel manager with lavish requests. Asher, who is the young guy married to this other girl in Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, who's a singer. He's the hotel singer who winds up fucking the gay guys. Oh. Coach Shaw, Jen Shaw's husband, hotel manager who gets swindled for being stupid as fuck. Ramona Singer as a hotel guest who just wants to fuck around. Love that. Brittany and Jax from Vanderpump, couple who hates each other and wants to kill each other. And PK and Dorit from Beverly Hills, rich couple who cheats on each other but also doesn't have any real money but are happy. PK would end up dead by one of the gays. Oh. I mean. Whoa. What, did you, what would people call this? Fan fiction. Uh, this is like fan fiction, right? Fan That's fiction, that yeah. people used to do like <clears throat> a yeah. bunch of years ago. I think that would be very, very fun. Um, I'm still um, reeling over my AI pictures. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Literally, the I really only like, person that doesn't look better. And, I don't, and is missing limbs. I don't know why they made you. <laughs> <laughs> missing limbs and then an extra arm in one we'll be sharing and all we're, these and nubs you guys can, can see this on the YouTube please, but I'll also post it please don't post those on Instagram you don't want me to post them on Instagram okay then you have to you have to come to the, the YouTube to watch <laughs> before we end the show this is sad this person said I can't afford Christmas presents so I'm telling my kids Santa isn't real oh that's so sad now I talked about this on the show a while ago that there is a movement of people parents that are coming forth and being like, I'm not telling my kids uh -huh. about Santa because it's like the first lie right. that you tell your kids. And I think like it's a weird way. To, it, it, there's a moment where kids find out and then they're like, well, this for all these years you lied to me. Like I believed everything you said. And as a parent, they don't actually think, even though it's an old fashioned thing uh -huh. people have done, they're like, it's not a dynamic I want to have with my child. Right. So I'm not. Well, the other element to it that I had never thought about, obviously, until someone brought it up to me, is that it, it, it would be tough for kids at school when a kid comes to school and says, Santa brought me, you know, this fancy bike or whatever. You have other kids in the class that don't have money. Well, Santa didn't bring me that, so am I bad? You know what I mean? It's also that element to it. Of right. Like, why... Why is this? Because the the myth behind Santa, right, is that if you're good, if you're on the you know the the not the naughty list, yeah, you're gonna get presents. Well, so was I bad because I didn't get what this person got? You know what I mean? There's that dynamic too. I never thought about it. Someone brought that up. When did you realize that Santa wasn't real? I was always trying to prove him wrong, <laughs> prove that he didn't exist. That he did or didn't? Did not. I was. I don't know what was wrong with me. But I, I, how old were you? I don't remember, but I went through a phase. I may be 10, where I was like snooping in my parents' bedroom to try and prove that Santa didn't exist. And I, and my, because sometimes my mom would leave price tags on and I would be like, this, this is from Sears. That's not from Santa. It's for, and she's like, well, Santa forgot to take the tags off. I'm like, why is Santa shopping at Sears? I don't know why, but I was always on a mission to prove that he didn't exist. That you really? Yeah. Yeah. I remember just like talking about it with people. Like, I remember one time this guy goes, I mean, think about it. This kid says to me, like, think about it. how can he go to every house? <laughs> like China, Japan. Yeah. I don't know. I see it both ways because then, as a, like when you're little, little, there is something so magical about right, like looking so outside cute. for the deer, the reindeer. I think it's a. I think it's probably a personal choice for your every parent. Yeah, don't you think? Like you kind of decide. I've don't. I've heard of other parents saying, "I worked so hard for the to buy these presents. I don't want some fictional person getting the credit for." It. I've heard. I remember too. getting a teddy bear, and my sister's like, "Go thank dad," and I'm like. Why do I have to thank him for shit? Like you didn't literally gave me nothing. <laughs> yeah, and like all the credit you know what, goes to. Some well, what I did, what characters. we did as a couple when our kids were little is we would have gifts from us, uh -huh. like a, like two or three gifts from us, and then there were Santa gifts. Yeah, that we did that too. And so then that kind of was like, 
okay. Yeah, it was like, here's a pile of unwrapped presents from Santa. Yeah, I still wrapped them all just because I thought it... Our parents... Well, there was three... Well, you had yeah. a lot, too. Yeah, you're right. I guess you could get away with unwrapping. Yeah. This is what I think anyone should do if you're in that position. Just go online and say this story and then just put, like, my GoFundMe is this. What? Oh, my God. If someone put online... I'm struggling. Oh, this. Oh, I'm just saying story. I'm struggling to the point where I'm going to have to tell my like four and five year old. Oh, they would help. There's no Santa. Right. People would be like, no, right. stop it. Where do you live? Mm-hmm. We're dropping off a bag of gifts. Yeah. Yeah. I think people So I'm would. just saying, I mean, you can do that. Yeah. I, I would, like it every year when the people um, pay for like the stuff on layaway for people. That's always a nice yeah. like, pay up for it. Kind of yeah. Thing. Not the like thing at Starbucks where you're paying for the person behind you. Cause Those that, aren't the people that need it. The, the, no, yeah. it's true. It's like really what I think what people should think about. Like if you really want to do something like cool, I'm just saying if you're – I mean I think I might go do this. Yeah. Something I've wanted to do for a while is like go to a store – Maybe just not in your neighborhood, like in a maybe a, a more of a working class neighborhood, and like a Walmart or something, and either do the layaway thing or literally to see somebody and be like, I just want to get what's in your cart, mm-hmm. and then that's it. And you don't film it, and you don't put right. it on TikTok. Yeah, and it's somebody that's like, and you know, chances are that's going to be a huge relief to them. But maybe they're not in a shelter or something. But there's so many people that need need that little treat, that little extra, that actually have a job and whatever, but they're just stretched so thin and they're not expecting it and they're not asking for it. That's what I think would be kind of cool because I'm like, think about those people. Well, on that beautiful note, Fortune. Heather. Feimster. Yes. Avatar. No, what is it called? AI Gorgeous. (laughs) Tell us. What do you have next besides them being able to snuggle up in, in their own home and watch your comedy special on Netflix? That's right. Good what fortune. What other, I know you have a million dates, like what's happening with your life? So I'm doing a bunch of club dates, working out my new act. It's very interactive and fun. So that's coming up. Ontario, California, San Jose, California, Irvine, California, and Oxnard. Those are all California dates. Okay. And then my big tour uh, starts end of January. I'm going oh, so to you're tons. doing those California dates like in the next month? Yeah, there's those are in you don't December and January. Get on, so you don't want to get on the plane right now? Yeah, yeah. Because well, I'm not really taking a break yeah. from the last tour. Uh, so I was like, I just can't get on a plane right now. Yeah. So those are those are more fun. Like it's all st- it's a uh, building the act, so people yeah. can get to be a part of it more. Um, and then yeah, I'm going to tons of cities. Like I think I start in Albuquerque and El Paso, uh, and then go to like I don't know Atlanta, Chattanooga, and then I'm going to add a bunch of more dates. Do you know that. when your show that you worked on in Canada is coming out? Can you say tell us that? I don't. I don't. They haven't told us when it's coming out. Sometime next year. That's why we haven't added more dates to the tour yet because we're waiting to hear if we get to do it again another season. Oh, okay. And I don't want to cancel a bunch of dates. Yeah. So we're being overly cautious right now. So people in a lot of cities, like even North Carolina, they're like, why aren't you coming here? I will be. We're just waiting to hear yeah. about my schedule. Or, you know what, people? Why don't you get your ass over to Vegas and make oh, a yeah. fun weekend out At of it? At the win, April if, 1st. If fortune, this is what I said when I was doing Vegas. If I'm not coming to your city... Go there for your anniversary, yeah, your girls' trip, your birthday, your whatever you have. Yeah. And if you're there in April, that's like the perfect the best month, time, best yeah. weather. The win is such a nice hotel. Mm-hmm. And you I've never see done it before. Fortune. I've never done the win before. I've not performed there, but I stayed there last year and I really liked it. Yeah. And for all you, uh, I know you have a lot of fans in Irvine. Oh, of course. I'll be there the weekend after the new year. Love it. Doing four shows, so come on Knock it out. Knock it out, girl. (laughs) Love you. Love you, bye.